The world, uh, the financial world, I should say, is looking to London, waiting for the results of the latest bank stress tests. The Committee of European Banking Supervisors is expected to start releasing those results at 5 o'clock local time. The purpose of the tests is to analyze whether European banks have enough capital to contain operating during any future economic shocks. The tests looked at 91 banks, representing 65% of the EU banking sector. Enough banks were included in the test to cover half of each nation's banking sector. The test uses a formula that includes GDP, unemployment, and the consumer price index. The committee says it looked at a what-if scenario that included a market deterioration to come up with the results. Well, the Spanish newspaper El País is reporting uh, several savings banks there failed the test. So what will bankers, economists and the public really be able to tell from the results? As Maggie Lake reports, similar tests completed in the U.S. may provide some clues. We're here outside a New York City branch of Citigroup, one of 19 major banks to be put through a stress test here in the U.S. last year. Now, that's a much smaller number than the firms currently being reviewed in Europe. At the time, some criticized the U.S. test for not being rigorous enough. Still, they did help instill confidence in banks at a crucial period and help spark a rally in U.S. bank shares. In those stress tests, regulators asked whether banks could withstand a more than 3% drop in GDP in 2009, an additional 22% drop in housing prices, and a rise to an 8.9% unemployment rate that year. Unemployment has since surpassed that target, but overall, analysts call U.S. stress tests a success. They asked very specific questions in the United States, and they released the questions they were asking banks before the fact. So everybody understood the, essentially the form that banks had to fill out in the United States. In the European exercise, we're really not quite sure uh, what questions they're answering. And so uh, a risk come Friday uh, is uh, investors say, is that all there is? You know, you did this exercise and that's all you ask them? Along with the transparency issue, another difference between the U.S. and European tests, the bureaucracy issue. Some analysts worry that the blizzard of results out Friday could be more chaotic than comforting. There's institutionalized confusion in Europe. Uh, Secretary Geithner basically could get all the people in the room in one place for the U.S. tests. It was only actually involving 240 different bank regulators, a lot of them working for the Federal Reserve. In Europe, you're talking about finance ministers talking to their bank supervisors, uh, 16 different countries, 91 different financial institutions. Uh, they don't all have the same rules. Uh, they don't all speak the same language. The U.S. stress tests were a turning point in confidence for the banking sector. No major institution failed, and many, like Citigroup, were able to bolster their capital reserves by raising money in the private market. Many hope the European exercise can bring the same sense of stability. Maggie Lake, CNN, New York.